Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to the channel where it is time for my match week 23. Yes, 23 predictions for the 2019-2020 Premier League season. Now let's have a quick look on how I did last week. It wasn't a great week, but I've managed to go 10-8 ahead of Mr. E, Duty to Entertain. His description will be in the description below. Uh, so, the results were... Uh, Sheffield United West Ham I went for a 2-1 win to Sheffield United that finished 1-0 Crystal Palace against Arsenal I went for a 2-2 draw that finished 1-1 Chelsea Burnley I went for a 2-1 win to Chelsea that finished 3-0 to Chelsea um, Everton Brighton I went for a 2-0 win to Everton that finished 1-0 now one of the shocks of the round for sure Leicester City Southampton went for a 3-1 win to Leicester City finished 2-1 to Southampton so that was a big big uh, shock there. Man United Norwich City, I went for a 3 1 win to Manchester United. That finished 4 0 to Manchester United. So a very, very much needed clean sheet for the, the Red Devils there. Wolves Newcastle went for a 2 0 win to Wolves. That finished 1 1. Uh, but how that finished 1 1, uh, I'll get into that game very, very shortly. Tottenham Liverpool, I went for a 2 0 win to Liverpool. It finished 1 0. Uh, Bournemouth Watford, I went for a 1 1 draw. It finished 3-0 to Watford in that game. That was an incredible uh, game, that one. And Aston Villa, Man City, I went for a 3-1 win to Man City. That was three goals off a perfect score. 6-1 to Manchester City. So, uh, no perfect scores, but seven outcomes. So, I'm pretty happy with that, but... Need to get, need to try and get those 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 wee perfect scores. Uh, but I'm ten eight ahead because obviously, uh, Mr. E got six outcomes, I got seven outcomes. So there we go. So, the games we have, we have a London derby between Watford and Tottenham. That is twelve thirty on Saturday. That is live on BT Sport. And then the three o'clock games, we have Arsenal Sheffield United. We have Brighton against Aston Villa, Manchester City against Crystal Palace, North City against Bournemouth. Uh, Southampton against Wolves, uh, West Ham against Everton, and then the 5.30 game, Newcastle against Chelsea, and then the two Super Sunday games, Burnley against Leicester City, and the big one, my game of the weekend, and probably the biggest game still in English football, Liverpool take on Manchester United at Anfield. Manchester United looking for a first win at Anfield since January 2016 where a certain Wayne Rooney scored the winner. And um, obviously, yes, Liverpool looking to remain unbeaten. So we have Watford against Tottenham, ladies and gents. And the last result, the last five between these sides have resulted in two wins to Spurs, two draws and one win to Watford. And Watford, uh, the last meeting was a 2-1 win to Watford. Uh, but obviously the previous fixture was a 1-1 draw. Uh, and actually Watford could have won that game as well. Watford, how impressive have Watford been recently? Um, taking 13 points from the possible 15 in the last five games. Um, and to be honest, since the Liverpool defeat, they've been terrific. Really, really good, haven't they? Um, obviously, they have had, obviously, since the, the Liverpool game, a 2-0 win against Manchester United, a 1-1 draw with Sheffield United, and then... Uh, 2-0 against, uh, sorry, 2-1 against uh, Wolves, 3-0 uh, against Aston Villa, and then yes, and then on Sunday, 3-0 against Bournemouth. So a very, very good performance from Watford. And to be honest, Watford are looking very, very good, and especially up front now. Obviously, you've got Troy Deeney, you've got Ismailia, Ismailia Sar as well. So they've definitely got a very good attacking threat, and defensively, they they were very, very good. Ben Foster continuing to impress as well in, in the Watford goal. You know, he, he, he looks like he's never been away uh, from Watford and uh, he's make, made himself a home at Watford, hasn't he? So he's 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 been excellent as well. So Watford are doing really, really well under um, Nigel Pearson and uh, it'll be an interesting game because they're coming up against a Spurs side who will be going away from the Liverpool game thinking how on earth did they not even get a point or even maybe three because that second half performance, they were much, much the better team. Yes, Liverpool dominated the first half, uh, but that, that second half, uh, you know, Spurs uh, had so many chances. I mean, I, I mean, Lo Celso, how he misses is unbelievable. Um, I don't understand how he missed that. Uh, goal gaping, and he manages to put it wide. Son had a chance as well, blazed it over, and it just wasn't going to be, you know, Spurs' day. 
And obviously the news that Harry Kane is now out until April is a big, big blow for Spurs. Uh, so will they go into the transfer market? Well, there's obviously talk about Piatek coming in for Spurs. So it'll be interesting to see for how Spurs line up in this game. Um, so because Watford are on very, very good form, Tottenham are not on great form at all, I'm going to go for a win for the Hornets, the much improving Hornets. I think Watford will continue their very good form. And I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Watford here. I just I think Watford could cause a wee upset here. I'm going for a 2-1 win to the Hornets here in this game. Arsenal against Sheffield United now. And the last five between the sides have resulted in two wins to Arsenal. Two wins to Sheffield United and one draw. And the last result was a 3-0 win to Arsenal. But obviously Sheffield United won the previous fixture 1-0 uh, earlier this season. Um... <clears throat> Now, Arsenal, a very good point away from uh, against Crystal Palace. Um, probably should be all three, though. They started really, really well at Palace. Um, totally dominated. Uh, but that second half, obviously, you know, Palace came back into it. Uh, you know, Aubameyang gets the goal. Very, very good. But then he gets sent off. Now, obviously, the referee gave a yellow card to begin with. Um, and in all honesty, you know, I think probably looking again at the tackle, I don't think Aubameyang can have any complaints. Uh, but it looks like he's going to miss three games now. And uh, he's a big, big, potent threat up front for Arsenal. Uh, obviously, if he's not being played on the wing, that is. But, um, you know, it was a very, very good point for Arsenal. And uh, they're slowly improving under uh, under Arteta. And I think they are getting a lot bit better for sure. Uh, but they're coming up against a very impressive Sheffield United side. Who again, another very good win against West Ham. 1-0. It was, uh, obviously, Ollie McBurney scored. Uh, it was a goal made in Scotland, basically. Uh, John Fleck playing in Ollie McBurney to um, to put the side ahead. So, um, a very, very good win. And uh, so, you know, Sheffield United are very, very impressive as well. Uh, this is going to be a very tricky game. Very tricky one to predict because, obviously, both sides are... In good form, Arsenal, uh, you know, picking up a few results recently. Okay, obviously, there's not been many wins, but they are not losing many games, and that, that's that's the thing. But they need to turn these draws into wins, I think, to stand any chance of getting that into that top four. So a very very hard game to predict. I'm going to go for a narrow Arsenal win. I, I think it'll be a very very narrow win for me. I'm going for Arsenal one, Sheffield United nil. I think it'll be a very very tight game. I'm going for Arsenal one. Sheffield United nil in the game. Brighton against Aston Villa now, and there's only been uh, there's only been a couple of meetings in the top flight, um, in fact, and obviously uh, Aston Villa beat Brighton two one earlier in the season, uh, but the last meeting at the Amex was a one one draw. That this came in the Championship way way back, but they did meet in the League Cup, and Aston Villa ran out three one winners. Uh, on that day as well at the Amex. So Aston Villa uh, looking to win again at the Amex. Um, Brighton has to be said against Everton. I mean, Everton won the game 1-0. Um, but they had their chances. They definitely had their chances in that game. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for Matt Ryan, you know, the score would have been a lot, lot better uh, for Everton. But Brighton are doing all right. Uh, Brighton are, are, are that team that they are doing very, very well. And it'll be very, very interesting to see how they do against Aston Villa because they are, they are coming up against an Aston Villa side who were totally outplayed, outfought, uh, battered, absolutely battered. 6-1 it was against Manchester City. And um, yeah, it wasn't great, let's put it that way. Uh, they definitely need a striker. Um, you know, obviously Olivier Giroud and Batshuayi have been two names mentioned. I do believe, though, that apparently Christian Benteke has been offered to Aston Villa as well. So, would that be something that Villa would go for? Would they want to bring Benteke back when, obviously, he's not been in very, very good form? That's another question you would have to ask as well. Uh, but, yeah, they definitely need bodies on do Villa. But they have got the experience of an experienced goalkeeper. Pe Pepe Reina is back in the Premier League. He is back uh, in the Premier League and he has joined Aston Villa on a, on a loan from uh, AC Milan until the end of the season. So he will probably come straight into the side to play Brighton. And I, to be honest, I think it's going to be a very, very hard game to, to call. Uh, obviously, Aston Villa, they're coming off the back of a 6-1 defeat to Man City. Uh, Brighton, oh, both of these sides coming off the back of defeats. Um, can't really separate them. I can't really separate them. I think I think it'll be a very, very close game. 
probably um, probably a good game for this for the for the neutrals. I would say for this one, I'm going to go for Brighton one, Aston Villa one. So it'll be very very interesting to see how that that game will go. But I'm going for a one one draw between Brighton and Aston Villa. Manchester City against Crystal Palace. Uh, the last five between these sides have resulted in three wins to Man City, one draw, and one win to Palace. And in fact, the last meeting that they had was that famous 3-2 win to Crystal Palace uh, in the game. Um, so that was obviously the last Crystal Palace win. Obviously, Man City won 2-0 away at Selhurst Park earlier in the season. Crystal Palace getting a very good 1-1 draw with Arsenal. Um, Ayu, how many goals is he going to score this season? Uh, seems to be on absolute fire at the moment, just Jordan Ayew. And he's he's doing brilliantly. He is doing really, really well. Um, Guaita again. I mean, my goodness me. This goalkeeper is uh, is just terrific for Crystal Palace. And, um, you know, if you thought if you thought you couldn't replace Julian Speroni, well, Vicente Guaita, I think this is a goalkeeper that might be targeted by the big clubs. He's a very good goalkeeper. And um, he is only going to get better for, uh, for sure. Uh, and... Um, it has to be said, it's going to be a very, very interesting game because obviously Man City are coming off the back of a 6-1 win over Aston Villa. Um, terrific. Sergio Aguero, 12 hat-tricks now in the Premier League. That's more than Alan Shearer, uh, which is excellent. Um, still a wee bit behind um, Shearer is Aguero, but if he can stay fit, then he'll probably be closer to that, uh, that, that goal record for sure. He's... He's just terrific, and he's one of those players you would definitely want in your team, uh, for sure. Kevin De Bruyne, again, absolutely superb uh, for Man City. And, you know, the thing is, Man City are continuing to, you know, play very, very well. And obviously, you know, they are 14 points behind Liverpool. But, you know, if they keep keep on winning, then all they have to do is they keep winning and just hope for a, a slip-up from uh, from the runaway leaders. But it's looking, it's looking very, very ominous. But having said that... Laporte seems to be coming back to fitness. Sani will probably be back as well. So if they can get their players back, then I think the clean sheets will start to come because, um, yeah, they did concede a very, very stupid penalty in the last minute against Aston Villa. But looking at this game, um, do I see any other upset for uh, since last season? No, I don't. I think Man City will be comfortable. Comfortable for the citizens. I'm going for a 3-1 win to Manchester City in the game. Now, North City against Bournemouth. Now, this is a big, big game because this is 20th versus 19th. Uh, and the last... There's only been three meetings between North and Bournemouth in the Premier League era. And it's a win apiece and a draw. And the last result was a 3-1 win to North City. Now, it's very, very interesting to see this. But North City absolutely hammered at Old Trafford. Uh, it has to be said. Obviously, Pukki was missing. And this is the thing, they don't score goals if Pukki's not on the side. That's a, that's one thing I, I have noticed with this North City side. If Pukki isn't there, then their goal threat obviously comes from Todd Cantwell as well. So that's a big worry for Norwich. And I think they have obviously strengthened as well. Um, there's a, there's obviously a couple of players coming in uh, for sure. But it'll be interesting to see how, how Norwich City do. But for me, they do look doomed at this moment in time. Um, but... This is a big game because Bournemouth, they're coming up against the Bournemouth side who have really lost form really, really badly. Um, and like I said in my uh, Premier League reactions video, if, obviously uh, I'll leave that in the description below for you to have a watch. Uh, Rick and Tim have done my Premier League predictions for sure. Um, Bournemouth are one of those sides where they've been ravaged by injuries. I mean, I could probably name an 11 of Bournemouth's side that has been injured all season. I mean, Charlie Daniels has been injured all season. You've got Callum Wilson has been out. Josh King has been out. Lewis Cook has been out. Addy Wilson has been out. Uh, Ryan Fraser has been out. Adam Smith, uh, Simon Francis, Steve Cook, Aaron Ramsdale. You know, there's there's an 11. There's an 11 for you. Jefferson Lerma as well. They've just had so many injuries. And once their players get back, I'm sure they'll be absolutely fine, uh, Bournemouth. I don't think they'll go down. In all honesty, I think it's a very, very hard job for Eddie Howe. And the thing is, like I said, I don't see Bournemouth getting rid of Eddie Howe at all. Um, and I think Bournemouth will go away to North City. Um, obviously, North City don't... Uh, every every game that they have been behind in, they have lost. So I think if Bournemouth get an early goal, I think, I think it'll be a very, very uh, good win 
for the Cherries. I'm going to go for a 2-1 away win at Carroll Road for Bournemouth. And uh, that would put uh, would ease the pressure on Eddie Howe at least uh, as well. So I'm going for a 2-1 win to Bournemouth. Very impressive Southampton now against Wolves. And the last five between the sides have resulted in three wins to Southampton. One win to Wolves and a draw. Then there for good measure. And the last result was a 3-1 win to Southampton. Now, Southampton have taken 13 points from a possible 15 in the last five games. Um, and some of the teams that have beaten along the way, they have beaten, they've beaten Chelsea, they've beaten Tottenham, they've beaten Leicester, they've beaten Norwich, um, at Watford as well. They've just been excellent, really, really good. And the thing is, Danny Ings is on absolute fire. Will Danny Ings go to the Euros? That's another thing you'd have to ask. Will Danny Ings go to the Euros? I think is if he continues to be fit and firing for Southampton, I think he'll be. I think he will be on that plane for uh, for the Euros for sure. And um, it'd be very interesting. It'd be very very interesting for me. But Southampton are doing very very well. They were excellent against Leicester. Thoroughly deserved the win. Um, and you know what? They're doing very very well. And. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting as they're coming up against the Wolves side. They're coming off a 1-1 draw with Newcastle, but they met a very, very good goalkeeper in Martin Dubravka. My goodness me, what a fantastic performance from Martin Dubravka to uh, to stop Wolves from uh, winning that game. Um, and you know what? It's going to be a very, very hard game for Wolves because they're coming away to Southampton. And then obviously they've got Liverpool on Thursday. So big, big games coming in. And obviously they have Manchester United tomorrow evening as well in the FA Cup replay. So it'll be a very, very interesting game, this one. Uh, so I am thinking that Southampton will continue their very, very good form. I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to the Saints. And don't be surprised if Danny Ings scores a game. 14 league goals this season is just phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. For, uh, for a very struggling Southampton side, but obviously they're not struggling right now, and uh, they could be easily top half this season if they continue winning, for sure. Southampton 2, Wolves 1, I'm going to go for. West Ham against Everton, and the last five between the sides have resulted in two wins to West Ham and three wins to Everton. Not many draws between these sides at all. And the last result was a 2-0 win to Everton in the game. Um, West Ham, dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, sitting in 16th and they've got a heck of a run of fixtures coming up I think it's I think it's something like um, so obviously they've got they've got Everton this week Leicester City midweek then Liverpool then I think it's a run of something like Arsenal Chelsea uh, Man United Man City I mean some of their games I mean there's some games in there that you could say that West Ham need to win Obviously, David Moyes has come in. Yes, they were unlucky at uh, at Sheffield United. Obviously, that goal was ruled out for by VAR. Obviously, it was a handball for Declan Rice. Um, and I've said I've said it for a while that this handball rule is ridiculous in VAR. It really, really is. So, you know, they'll feel hard done by going away to uh, to do that uh, to lose at Sheffield United, and then obviously they lost Fabianski again to injury. And then David Martin makes a horrendous back, a horrendous mistake for uh, Sheffield United's goal. Very, very poor from him as well. So, yeah, it's worrying times for West Ham. It has to be said, worrying times for sure. Everton, they are they are really really impressive at right this moment in time. Um, you know they've taken ten points from the last fifteen, and to be honest, Everton are doing a lot, lot better under Carlo Ancelotti than they were under Marco Silva. And, uh, you know, Richarlison got the winner against Brighton. Um, and, you know, if it wasn't for Matt Ryan, like I've said, it would have been more for Everton. So I just feel that Everton will go away to West Ham, can uh, put the, the doom and gloom over the hammers again. I'm going to go for West Ham nil, Everton 2 in this game. I just do not see how West Ham win this game. So I'm going for a 2-0 win to the Blues here uh, and the Saturday tea time game is Newcastle United against Chelsea and the last five between the sides have resulted in one win to Newcastle four wins to Chelsea and the last result was a 2-1 win to Chelsea Newcastle United obviously getting a draw against Wolves they took the lead in that game Almiron he, 
when basically he has gone on a run of not scoring, they come like London buses. When you score one, another one will come around. So he has, I think he's scored now is it three or four goals in his last six appearances or think of something. So, yeah, he's doing well. He's doing well, Amirong. Um, but like I said earlier, De Bradka was absolutely impressive against Wolves. And it has to be said that uh, he's a very good goalkeeper as Dubravka. We've got so many good, good goalkeepers in the Premier League. Obviously, you've got Guaita at Crystal Palace, you've got Dubravka at Newcastle, you've got uh, Rua Patricio at, uh, at Wolves, Alisson at Liverpool, De Gea at Manchester United, Lloris at Tottenham, Leno at Arsenal, Ederson Man City. So there's so many good goalkeepers in this league and Dubravka is definitely up there to, uh, for one of them as well. Um... So obviously they're coming back in front of their home fans, but they're coming up a very against a very impressive Chelsea side. 3 0 winners over Burnley, and um, it was a very very good performance from uh, from Chelsea. And uh, obviously uh, Hudson Odoi finally getting his first league goal for Chelsea, and that'll that'll take the the heat off him as well. So it's a good good performance from Chelsea, and it'll be very very interesting to see how they do. I think against the Newcastle side, but. Going away to Newcastle, it'll be a hard game, but I fancy Chelsea. I fancy Chelsea because their away form recently has been very, very good. Okay, the only exceptions are obviously Man City, Man United and Everton. Obviously, they've lost all uh, against all of them, but ever since then, their away form has been very, very good. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Chelsea in the game. I think Chelsea will go away to Newcastle and, uh, and win. Newcastle kind of struggling a little bit at the moment. Um, so be very very interesting for sure but uh, yeah I'm going for a 2-1 win to Chelsea Burnley against Leicester City now we're moving th- into the Sunday games and the last five between Burnley and Leicester City have resulted in one win to Burnley one draw and three wins to Leicester City and the last result was a 2-1 win to Leicester City in the game um, obviously the last meeting at uh, Turf Moor as well Um Burnley were very, very poor against Chelsea, has to be said, but I can't see them getting rid of Sean Dyche, honestly. I really, really can't. I know they are falling very, very rapidly, um, but the thing is with Burnley, I just think that, okay, I did have them 17th this season, but I do think they will survive because they do have a manager who knows about surviving in the Premier League, is Sean Dyche. So I think they will be okay, um, but... Yeah, they'll definitely want to win games for sure very, very quickly uh, because it's, uh, you know, if you keep losing games, it's a big, big worry for them and it's going to be very interesting to see how they do against the Leicester City side who will be hurting from a 2-1 defeat to uh, Southampton and um, in all honesty, they were very poor in that game. Um, You know, uh, obviously my friend Anthony, who obviously is a Leicester City fan, he said to me that, uh, you know, Southampton did deserve to win in that game and... um, Credit to him because obviously, like he obviously follows Leicester City home and away, and you know, you know when when Leicester City do struggle, then you know that is that is one of those things. But yeah, it was a good win for Southampton, very good win against uh, for Southampton away at uh, away at Leicester City. So Leicester City obviously coming in back, uh, they're going away to Burnley, and Burnley really really struggle against Leicester City. So I'm going to go for a two 0 win. To Leicester City, I just think Leicester City will be way too strong for Burnley. Shall be very interesting for me, but Leicester City to win by two goals to nil. And it, and the last game, it's the game of the weekend. It is the biggest game in English football still. It is Liverpool against Manchester United. Looking forward to this one. This is half past four on Sunday, and the last five between Man United and uh, Liverpool and Man United have resulted in one win to Liverpool, three draws, and one win. To Man United, <clears throat> and the last result was a three-one win to Liverpool at Anfield last season. Obviously, that was the result that got Jose Mourinho the sack as Manchester United manager. But obviously, the previous fixture between these sides was a one-one draw. Rashford scoring uh, for United and Lalana scoring for Liverpool in that game. Um, now, it has to be said, Liverpool. I uh, very fortunate, very very fortunate to win at Tottenham. Uh, <clears throat> you know, jo- if if your captain Jordan Henderson comes off the pitch and says to Jurgen Klopp that it's not good enough, it was. So yeah, you have to say that. Uh, it was a very very it was a gutsy performance. They really really grinded it out. It has to be said because Tottenham did come into that second half really really better uh, as well. But 
This is the thing for Liverpool. Now, Fabinho, Lovren, Matip, Shakiri are all back in training, so it looks like they could probably either make this game or they will probably make the Wolves game on uh, on Thursday. So, um, yeah, Fabinho is one of those that is definitely in contention uh, for the game against uh, Manchester United. And it'll be interesting, it'll be very, very interesting for sure. Obviously, Bobby Firmino scored in the scoring the winner for uh, for Liverpool at Tottenham. Can he score an Anfield goal this season? He's still not scored at Anfield this season, but um, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But obviously, he has scored against Manchester United before, uh, but that was a Europa League tie, very very early um, early on 2015 2016 season that was. So it should be a very interesting game. Obviously, the Manchester United are coming off the back of a four 0 win. Over uh, Norwich City, and it has to be said, Marcus Rashford, fantastic for him to get to 200 Manchester United appearances, 64 goals and 200 appearances for Manchester United. And the thing is, that's quicker than Cristiano Ronaldo. I think he got 59 in, in 200 appearances, um, but it's he's only behind Wayne Rooney who got 81 in 200 appearances. But Rashford is doing really, really well. 19 goals and 30 appearances a season is brilliant. It really, really is. Um, and to be honest, that was a much-needed clean sheet for Manchester United. Brandon Williams still impressing at left-back as well. You know, Manchester United are a very, very funny team because you never know which Manchester United is coming uh, is, is going to turn up. Uh, is it going to be the one that loses to Watford? Is it going to be the one that wins against Spurs and Manchester City? You just don't know. So... This is a very, very hard game to call because they are always hard games to call, these ones. Uh, especially with uh, Liverpool and Manchester United uh, as well. It'll be a hard game. It'll be a very, very hard game for uh, for Liverpool. But I do think Liverpool will get the win, but I don't think it will be uh, as comfortable as many people are actually predicting this weekend. Um, obviously, Jurgen Klopp has still not beaten Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And obviously, Man United are the only team to have taken points off Liverpool this season, so they'll be they'll be confident going into this game. But looking ahead to the game, I am going to go for Liverpool to continue their winning run. I'm going to go for Liverpool two, Manchester United one. I'm going to go for a two one win to Liverpool. I just think it will be a very very hard game, but I do think Liverpool will get the win. Liverpool two. Manchester United won. So that is it. That is match week 23 done and dusted. And I will go through my predictions very, very quickly as well. And you can join in as well if you would like to. Watford 2, Spurs 1. Arsenal 1, Sheffield United 0. Brighton 1, Aston Villa 1. Manchester City 3, Crystal Palace 1. Norwich City 1, Bournemouth 2. Southampton 2, Wolves 1. West Ham 0, Everton 2. Newcastle United 1, Chelsea 2. Burnley 0, Leicester City 2. And Liverpool 2, Manchester United won. So that is it. That is my match week 23 predictions. Please have your uh, predictions in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, you can have a, you can join in if you would like to uh, as well. So we shall see what happens. And um, yeah, some good games this weekend. Obviously Watford, Tottenham, uh, Burnley, Leicester and Man Liverpool, Manchester United rounds off the, the bill. So I will be back on probably Monday with my match week 24 predictions for the 2019-2020 Premier League season. Going very, very quickly for sure uh, this season. It's going really, really quickly for sure. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you do like my content, then please hit that subscribe button. It'd be very fantastic as well. Smash a like, leave a comment. Smash a like on this video as well. Uh, as well, that'd be brilliant as well. But uh, enjoy the football. Good luck to your teams. Of course, of course if, you're not, if you're a Manchester United fan, I can't have you guys beating Liverpool. And we'll see what happens this weekend. But uh, thank you very much for watching. And I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.